If you dream of cruising extensively with your family and minimum crew, or even no crew at all, you absolutely have to take a look at this yacht, the Numerine 22 XP. We've flown over to Istanbul to take a look at this particular model just a few days before the owner takes delivery of her. In fact, as you look around, you'll see a fair amount of plastic covering because Numerine wants to deliver this to the owner in immaculate condition as you understand, but it was a rare opportunity to film this model. They are so popular. Owners just want to get them, take them and start cruising without having a, a film crew around. We took advantage of the opportunity to show you why it's such a popular model. This is the smallest of the Numerine fleet at 22.6 meters in length. Let's get a few technical features of the yacht covered straight away before showing you around. She has a six meter beam, a 1.84 meter draft and is propelled by two Cummins 425 horsepower engines that allow her to travel at a maximum speed of 13 knots and a cruise speed of 9 knots although if you slow down just a little to 8 knots you'll get a 1500 nautical mile range from fuel tanks with a 6000 litre capacity. In my opinion though the reason that this is such a popular model is the astonishing amount of space on board. It is quite remarkable. We'll start at the extreme aft of the yacht on this hydraulic swim platform. As you probably guessed, this actually lowers into the sea, which is a great way to be able to launch the tender, but also a great way to access the sea on a beautiful day like today for swimming. Many yachts, maybe a little bit bigger than this, will actually have the tender storage inside. The disadvantage of that is it does eat up a lot of space. We'll return to this area soon to show you beyond this door where the crew quarters are. And one of the themes as we look through is the amazingly intelligent and well thought out use of space, how much they have packed into this 22.6 meter long yacht. Let's take a look on the aft deck. But before we do that, I'd just like to let you know that there's an option where they can actually bring out the transom like this into this kind of shape. And I'll show you why they do that and why you may want to do that on your yacht. You see, right now, this area is dedicated to a really beautiful seating area. But if you wanted to have a sun pad to get the extra foot space that you need, they can actually extend this quite a lot further out. Personally, I like this. As we look around the yacht, you'll see that there's plenty of sunbathing space anyway. And I like the idea of being able to have dinner here with plenty of space for the stewardess to to walk around i say stewardess of course <laughs> if you're with your family it's probably going to be family dining cooking for yourself um, but still lots of space to be able to really enjoy a good meal with plenty of people here very important we have a mooring station and, and you can control everything you need to from here on the yacht I don't have the experience necessary to be able to drive one of these far less, put it into position in berth. However, as I look at it and I look at the position of this, I don't think it would take too much to be able to gain that experience and to be able to safely bring this yacht into a marina, into its berth with maybe your family or minimum crew helping with the fenders either side. Visibility is excellent and as a position this is exactly the right position for the mooring station. Before we go inside though, I'd like to show you a little bit outside on this deck level. I was very impressed with the width of these side decks. I was especially impressed because I've already seen inside and as you will see in a moment, there's plenty of space in there, but they've not got that space by sacrificing the width and the comfort of the side decks. And just look how far forward the superstructure comes. You'll see inside that the amount of volume that that wins you inside is considerable, but still you have enough space for this really nice seating area here. You've got sunbathing, you've got a nice seating area, a lovely place to be able to sit uh, with your partner, have a nice chat 
and a couple of glasses of Prosecco as well. And inside the New Marine 22 XP, I have to say it's elegant, it's simple, and it's very, very light. The size of these windows allows so much light, natural sunlight into the yacht. I remember when New Marine came out with their XP series of yachts, and I was quite taken aback by how big those windows are. It's a very distinguishing design feature, but it offers a lot of practicality too because this is a truly well illuminated yacht. It's also very simple to keep clean and tidy. You can see this is just a nice, simple, easy to clean top with a pop-up television there. They've brought the unit along so that you have extra storage space here. We've got some of our filming equipment in there right now. And as we move along, I think one of the things that's most impressive is that use of space. They've tried to use every single centimeter in a way that the owner will benefit from it. The galley's a nice size. You have a good fridge and a freezer. Very well proportioned oven here too, really everything that you need. And again, with a nice big window letting lots of light in. Just on a little practical point, because I'm sure that many of you either had yachts or, or maybe you've been involved in building a home or an apartment. And you know how annoying it is when after you've built it, you, you don't have enough plug sockets for the electrical appliances. Just look at this. One, two, three, four, another five, six there. So plenty of electrical outlets for your appliance. It just shows the thought process that's gone into the yacht. Moving along, something that you may not have immediately noticed, is here we have another fridge and another freezer. And I should really say to you that if you're looking at building at New Marine, you should always ask about these things. A lot of these things are, are optional extras. The shipyard are very happy to give you suggestions on how they can fit in extra storage space, extra refrigerator space, whatever it is that you need. You just need to talk to them and figure out a good solution. That's a very good solution for extra refrigeration. And here, neatly tucked away, is the bridge. I was particularly struck when I came in here by how close I am to the bow. Again, if you lack the experience of, of a super yacht captain, then it's good to get a feel for the spaces if you're going to actually drive the boat yourself. And again, this gives me a feeling of confidence. This is a boat that I could actually learn how to drive and maneuver quite effectively and quite safely. Moving down, we'll see that the guest accommodation is split into two. Again, that's to get the maximum space. And actually, as we come down these steps, I'll just pause for a second to show you that here, for example, the owner of this yacht has opted to use this for a little bit of extra storage space and it goes quite back quite far. And here we have the VIP stateroom. And just as they've pushed the superstructure of the yacht as far forward as they possibly can to give you all of that interior volume on the main deck, they've also brought all of the accommodation as far forward as they possibly can so that you've got this lovely, well-sized VIP stateroom, plenty of room to walk around. I remind you, we're in a, a yacht that's about 70 feet in, in length and yet a good-sized VIP, VIP. Eventually, there'll be a stool, I would imagine, here to be able to benefit from the little beauty cabinet there. Good closet space. And a respectable sized ensuite head as well, with a good shower that's easy, high enough for you to be able to take a proper shower in without feeling claustrophobic. So this is the VIP stateroom. What about the other guest accommodation? 
let's take a look. And the rest of the guest accommodation is tucked neatly away on this side of the yacht. But as we walk down the stairs, I wanted to show you another clever feature. Again, this was the choice of the owner, and a very good choice to have washer dryer tucked away there. We'll see as we look around a little bit further, it's not the only one on board, but it's not unusual for, for owners and their families to want to be able to do their own washing. And so that's a nice place to be able to come from the cabins, throw your washing in there, go for a swim and let the washing machine do its job. Now here we have a layout with a lot of flexibility. In this port side stateroom, we have two twin bunks. Again, plenty of closet space, extra storage space underneath the bunks themselves, and a good sized ensuite, again, with a good sized shower. So this might be a, a stateroom possibly that you'd put children in, or if you've got a lad's weekend away, it's good to be able to have separate bunks, of course, for your friends. Here, we've got a double stateroom. And again, look at the amount of space that you can walk around here. It's, um, it's a well-sized cabin. I think it was a good idea to be able to put the bed laterally because it does create a lot more space or at least the impression of space. They could have put it up against this bulkhead, but I don't think anybody likes having to get into bed and then roll over against a bulkhead. It's much better to have this arrangement here. Again, with a really nice sized ensuite, and again, with good closet space. But the stateroom that surprised me the most, which possibly is the way that it should be, is the master. This takes up that whole six meters beam to the absolute best use possible lots of natural sunlight coming in. I really like the design features that they have as well for the storage. Two closets, so you can have a his and a hers closet. A really nice sized television there. Again, an area that you can work or put your makeup on, whatever it is that you need to do. And this time the ensuite is, as it should be, even bigger than the rest of the cabins with a really lovely sized shower and some nice design features in there as well. But even this is not the thing that impressed me the most about this yacht or that surprised me the most. I mean, everybody kind of imagines that you're gonna have a really nice master stateroom, perhaps not as nice as this, but nonetheless, not a massive surprise. What really surprised me is the sun deck. This is a nice feature, by the way. Have you seen how the sliding door slides to completely open so that even when you're sitting inside, you have this feeling of being outside and really enjoying the scenery. Just look at the size of this sun deck. People use the word pocket super yachts too easily, and I'm probably the first to do that actually, because it's a really cool expression of pocket super yacht. But I say, is it really a pocket super yacht? Does it have all of the things that a super yacht should have in a smaller package? Well, this does. You've got space for a little bit of gym equipment, not just over there, but they've put some weights here as well. You've got a lovely hard top offering a shaded position to eat. You've got the grill, ice maker, refrigeration space, a sink so that things can be washed up and kept, uh, kept clean here as well. Not to mention more seating area here and a sunbathing area there. I mean, this really is a pocket super yacht. You've got everything you could possibly want. And I remember when I worked for a builder, very often um, owners would want to have um, a flybridge position uh, on this deck and not all yacht builders are prepared to do that. New Marine do, they understand this is a great position to be able to 
uh, drive the boat from. And they've been able to do it in a way that it doesn't impact on the space of actually enjoying the taking in of the sun and the activities that you want to do when you're on your yacht in a beautiful place such as this. I know though that everybody who watches this YouTube channel loves to see the engine room and they're always curious about the cruise space. I'm particularly looking forward to showing it to you because I think that too is quite a surprise. By the way, if you wondered what these panels are, this is for a seating area so that you can sit here at water level and enjoy the view. Let's take a look at where the crew are and at the engine room. Now remember, this is a relatively small yacht. It's questionable as to whether you'll even want to have crew on board, but it's always good to have the option. So what New Marine have done is made this into a very practical area you can have an extra bunk here by putting this pillow cushion in the space. But actually, I think it's very unlikely you'll need that because here you've got a perfectly acceptable uh, cabin for the crew with two decent sized bunks. You also have another washer dryer, a um, little television set so that if the person who's along with you to wash the boat down or whatever they're going to do, it's at least got a little bit of entertainment and privacy. But through here, we have the engine room. Look at the head height here. It's very, very impressive. Actually, when I mentioned that to the new marine representative, they said to me, well, yes, of course, it's got good head height, as if what on earth did I expect? But again, on a yacht of this size, not all engine rooms are as spacious as this. We've got our two Cummins engines and plenty of space to be able to work and do the necessary maintenance. It's probably a good moment as well to tell you that the yacht comes with two options. If you want to, you can have bigger engines and make a modification to the hull, and then it becomes a planing yacht with far different performance. I believe they've only sold one yacht with that option so far. So clearly most people prefer the slower yachts with bigger range, but good to know that you can do that if you want to. So there you have it. A little bit of an unusual video in some respects, because as you know, usually I film yachts that are actually available for sale. This is already sold. The owner takes delivery in just a few days time. However, Northrop and Johnson enjoy an exclusivity agreement with New Marine, and it's been extremely productive. My colleagues, the brokers in our company have sold so many of these yachts. It left me asking the question, why are New Marine so popular? Why are they such a successful company? I just had to come and film this, the smallest in their fleet, and tomorrow we'll be filming the largest, which is the 37 XP. But I think this smallest yacht encapsulates what's so great about New Marine. They know what people want. They know the importance of using space wisely. They know the importance of a good range. They produce it. They deliver it, and if that's something that you'd like to find out more about, please do contact us for more details.